And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. It doesn't take three to six months to build or to redesign a website. Welcome to the We Are Slam show where you'll learn marketing agency insights, best practices, and ideas to help your business grow. My name is Tyler Kelly. I'm the co-founder and chief strategist here at Slam Agency. Now this show is for marketing professionals, people that are strategizing, putting together plans to market their companies. It's for small business owners who might not necessarily have somebody in charge of marketing yet, so you're the one that's going out and doing everything on the sales and marketing side, and that's okay. And today's show is an important one, and it's important because you might be at that point in your business or with your brand that you're like, okay, it's time for us to go ahead and, and redo our website, to get a new website, you know, to launch this new project, we need a website. And What I want to reveal today is the five questions that you absolutely have to know the answers to before you hire a web designer, before you hire a branding firm that does web design or development. These are the things that you want to go into the conversation knowing so that you make the absolute best decision for your business. And these things are important. They're important because your website is the lifeblood of your business. I mean, people go to your website to verify your credibility, to to confirm that you are who you say you are. They go there to see if you're a trustworthy business and are you a business that you they can count on. I mean, these are the things that people are looking for. You know, as a matter of fact, 70% of the purchase decision is already made up before this person, the prospect, your potential customer ever picks up the phone and calls you before they ever step foot in your store. I mean, the decision is already made. 70%, can you believe that? It's true, it's true because what's happening is people are going online first. They're making up their minds online. They're doing their research, their homework online. They're discovering you online. And by the time they come into your store, pick up the phone and schedule an appointment, their mind's already made up. And so this changes the way that that you have to interact with people in this digital world, in this post-COVID world. This this is how business is, is being done, and you need to be aware of that. So when it comes to this question, there are certain things that you really need to know before you sign on the dotted line, before you make that decision. And these are the things that I'm gonna share with you in this show today. So let's jump right in. The first thing I want you to do, the first secret, if you will, Anytime you're speaking with a web developer, a web designer, uh, a web agency, somebody that is getting ready to give you a contract or a price or a bid on doing your website, the first thing I want you to do, and really this is something that you should do before you even pick up the phone and call them, or if they're a friend before you commit to the meeting, before you commit to the option of potentially working with them, go to their website. Go to their website and take a look at their website and ask yourself, how does this website make me feel? Is this a good website? And you be the judge of that because you're the one that's gonna be putting your money forward in this type of relationship. So ask yourself, is what I see here representative of the type of work that I need done? That's the first question, it's super important. It's the first question that you should be asking yourself. Click on the buttons, click on the links. See if there's typos in the copy. See if there are things that aren't lining up. Go to your phone and see what it looks like on your phone and see, you know, does it respond well on a mobile device? These are the things that you should be doing first and foremost before, number one, before you set a meeting with somebody and number two, definitely before you sign on the bottom line, okay? You need to understand that they've put in the work to make their website shine. If their website doesn't shine, if it's not updated, if there are misspellings or typos or incorrect grammar, then these are the, or they're just not mobile responsive. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of what makes a good website. If it's slow, if it takes time to load, if you search for the business's name and they don't pop up in Google search, these are the types of things that might make you think, hmm, well, If their brand name isn't popping up in Google search, then perhaps there's a problem with the way they've optimized their website. And maybe there would be a problem with the way they'd optimize yours. And so what you're doing is you you are becoming a detective and you're kind of clicking through and you're looking and you're doing a thorough review. 
You're not just going to go to their homepage, pick up the phone and call them. You're going to do a thorough review. You're going to click on every button. You're going to look and see how does this website make me feel? Is it speaking to me as a potential customer? Does it relate to me? And obviously, does everything work? Are there any broken links? Does the form work? Is there a phone number that I can call or is it just like contact form only? Is there an email? All of these types of things that make a good business website are the things that you should be looking for first and foremost when you begin to call on web designers. So that's number one. Number two, and this is assuming that you've already begun discussions and now you're talking about price. Number two is what are you paying for? This is a question that I want you to get used to asking. What am I paying for? What are the things that are gonna be included in this contract? You know, a lot of times when we think about redesigning a website, rebuilding a website, what we think about are just those things that we can see on the surface. What the website looks like, the colors, the fonts. If, if it's not mobile responsive right now, maybe it's mobile responsive, hopefully after the redesign. But these are just surface things, right? There's so much more that goes into a good website. This includes the way that the story is, is, is laid out on the page. It includes the way that it's optimized. These are things that you can't necessarily see. It's how fast does the website load? Is it discoverable in search engines like Google? Is it optimized for that? These are the types of things that a good website has, and they're not always things that you see on the surface. It's not always the design. It's not always the look and feel. It might be taking you know big chunks of content and making them more scannable. Scannable content is super important on a website because people don't read text, they scan text. So these are all the types of things that make a good website. And so these are the things that you need to know and the questions that you need to ask what am I paying for? What are you paying for? Are you paying for, you know, SEO optimization? Are you pay paying for, you know, content rewriting, restructuring? Are you paying for, you know, a reorganization of the nuts and bolts of the website, mobile friendliness, mobile responsiveness? Are you paying for these things or are you just paying for, you know, a refresh? Are you just paying for something that is, you know, new colors, new fonts, new typography, and that's it. I mean, what are you paying for? And the reason why this is important is because you get what you pay for. I mean, I know this is obvious, but it bears repeating. For instance, website builders. Website builders, and when I say website builder, I'm really referring to like the Squarespaces, the Wixes, the Weeblies of the world. Website builders are framed and positioned as something that is super easy, right? But what I know, as an agency owner is that these might be easy to get something up and running, but they're not necessarily the types of places that we want to invest in the long term. Meaning, if I'm building a, a simple site for a campaign or a project and I want that to get out there fast and I don't want you know a whole lot of customization when it comes to the layout or you know the design, I just want something that is simple, is proven effective is responsive and then I can just put the information in and you know get that out there and this campaign you know it's not going to be a forever thing it's this website is going to have a start date and at some point the campaign is going to end it's going to have an end date a Squarespace a Weebly a Wix perfect for this okay what I don't want to use these sites for is a situation where, okay, this is my forever site. This is my site where you know I'm gonna blog, I'm gonna build a list. And, I, and the reason why I don't wanna use these sites for that is because I know, you might not know this, but I know this as an agency owner, that at some point, you're gonna want something that has more power than these sites are able to provide. If your business is growing and you're evolving as a business, then you're gonna want something more powerful than a Squarespace or a Weebly. And when that time comes, it's going to be very difficult, if not nearly impossible, to switch from the Squarespace to 
you know, a real website. It's it, at least at this point with the technology that there that there is and the way that, you know, importing and exporting from a Squarespace spot site to like a WordPress or a HubSpot site, the way that works, it's very difficult. And the money that you saved from going through to like a Squarespace or a Weebly in the beginning, the money that you saved then, you're definitely going to pay later. You're going to pay later because it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort. And if you hire somebody, it's going to take a lot more money to get that site from that platform to a more sustainable platform. And so I always say, you know, do WordPress first. You know, sometimes when you're just starting out, the cost of a Squarespace seems super appealing. But the thing is, WordPress, the cost isn't that much more. And so I would all, we always direct our clients to WordPress. WordPress first and, you know, potentially HubSpot website after that. But WordPress first, stay away from the Squarespaces, the Weebly, the Wixes, unless for whatever reason, you've already built a store on one of those sites and you're already bringing in income and, and, and the system and the machine works. If you're not in that position, or like I said, if, you're, if, if it's just like a, a temporary site that you just wanna launch a campaign, launch a project, get it out there quickly, knowing that at some point that site's going to go away. If it's not one of those two use cases, then then by all, and you're looking at something like for your business, like a website that's going to represent you and it's going to be around for a while, you definitely want to go with like a WordPress or a HubSpot website. These are things that you might not be thinking about right now, and that's okay. But trust me, you're going to save a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy later on if you just go straight to WordPress and just, you know, scratch the idea of doing a Squarespace or a Weebly or something like that. Okay, number three question that you need to absolutely know the answer to when you're getting ready to hire a web design firm or a web developer or something like that. Number three, do they understand sales and marketing? Does this web development company understand sales and marketing? The reason why is because your website is where the sales and the marketing happens. This is where people go to learn about you. It's where they go to confirm that you are who you say you are. And more than just like this pretty website that kind of just sits there like a brochure, a website has to function. A website has to generate leads. It has to capture email addresses. It has to help your potential buyers, your prospects go from one stage in the buyer cycle to the next. It has to kind of nurture them and bring them along. And as part of that, there's, there's some things you got to think about, like how does the email marketing integrate? How does the CRM integrate? You know, how does our advertising, our pay-per-click, how do these things kind of fit in and work throughout the site? And then how is our messaging, our story, how is that laid out in a way that is compelling, in a way that captivates, motivates, and inspires people to action? Like, how is this happening? If your developer doesn't understand sales and marketing, then what I would suggest is that you have somebody on the team that does, meaning a marketing director, either in-house or, you know, a consultant that you hire or that you're working kind of like a general contractor in that, okay, I, you know, I've got this developer, somebody that is good at coding, and then I've got to have a designer, somebody that's good at like making the visual come to life and be impactful. Then I have a copywriter, somebody that can put the words on the page in a way that are going to drive demand. And then I have, you know, an, a, an SEO person, somebody that can optimize the content the copywriters put together, somebody that can optimize that content and make sure that it's search engine friendly. And, you know, then I have an analytics person, somebody that can, you know, install the analytics, make sure that everything's going the way that it needs to go. And possibly even a CRM person, somebody that can make sure that when people land on the site, that their information is being collected and then it's being, you know, put into the CRM and those people are through, you know, sales intelligence like HubSpot sales are, you know, being nurtured and are being nurtured in a way that will not only drive demand, but drive sales in the future. And so these are all the things that you have to think about and all the things that a good marketing team will think about. And if you're just going to go out and hire a developer, then by all means, make sure you get all these other roles on the team as well, or look for a company or a firm that provides each of the roles that I just mentioned as part of of that team that's gonna be building out that website. Okay, the number four question that you absolutely need to know, and this is a big one, what is the timeline? 
you should absolutely know how long it's going to take to complete your project, okay? I'll let you in on a little secret. A lot of times, at least pre-COVID, the contracts that were put out there by web development firms or web agencies or branding firms would say three to six months on a website. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. It doesn't take three to six months to build or to redesign a website. It never has. Maybe, I guess maybe in the late 90s, early 2000s, it probably took three to six months when we were doing HTML from scratch pre-WordPress. But here's the thing, it does not take three to six months to build a website. What may take three to six months is to get you into the rotation. And so what I want you to understand when you think about timeline is how much time are they actually spending on the website itself and how much time is spent with you just standing in line waiting for your turn with the web development team. Okay, because like I said, it doesn't take three to six months. Generally, it takes four to eight weeks, and I'm being generous because, I mean, that's working time for somebody to build your website from the ground up. And if it's a redesign, if you're just coming in and doing a refresh, then it could potentially take four to six weeks, okay? And so this is the amount of time that people would actually be working on your site. Any other time in, in that three to six months or in that quote that you have that's over eight weeks is most likely spent with meetings, with some back and forth, and honestly, with just, may, just getting you in line. You're just in line, you're waiting for your turn. And so what's the timeline? Ask the question and figure out, you know, when are, when are we gonna start and what can I see? You know, web development project happens online. And so there's always something that you can see every step of the way. I've, I've never been a fan, Slam has never been a fan of the big reveal, meaning that, you know, we're not gonna start a project, work it through to completion, and then show it to the client. We like to work with the client step by step. And what this means is that you, if you were our client, would be involved every step of the way, at every point in that development process, in that copywriting process, in that uh, design process, you're gonna see progress, okay? It's not gonna be like, okay, four weeks later, boom, here's your website. You're gonna see the progression, you're gonna see the evolution, you're gonna see somebody working on your site. And this is important when it comes to timeline because you know that people are working on your site. The last thing I want you to be aware of, I want you to know is, does the agency, does the firm, does the developer that you are going to select, do they offer a turnkey solution? This is an important question because websites are more than what you see. I mean, there's domain names. So somebody has to, if this is your first website, somebody has to purchase the domain. I would suggest that that somebody be you. Never let your agency purchase the domain for you. Make sure that you purchase it for yourself. The reason why is it's very difficult to transfer domains and you never want to get in a situation where you don't own your intellectual property. The other thing that's important is hosting. Do they provide hosting? Is this something that you can count on? You know, computer websites are hosted or websites sit on computers that are connected to the internet, okay? Those computers are called host and so somebody has to pay for hosting. I mean, this isn't free. Is that included as part of your web development design package that you're gonna be signing on the dotted line for or is that something that is going to, you know, once your website goes live, is going to be additional? A lot of times, at least here at Slam, what we do is we provide the first six months of hosting for free, and then after that, we'll bill you for hosting. Some people aren't comfortable with, with uh, you know, giving the hosting to their agency, so what they do is they go out and buy their own hosting, and that's completely okay too. What else might be included? Well, you know, you might not have a website without photography. And so, you know, photography of your people, of your location, of your, your, your you know, projects, that's important. Perhaps video is something that you want on your website. Are these things included? Are there, are there additional costs to these things? And is the person that you're hiring capable of doing all of these things? Or are there gonna be additional expenses later on down the line because they have to hire people to do these things? Copywriting, SEO, all of the above, I mentioned the rules earlier. Are these things included? Are they extra? Is it all happening in-house under one roof? 
or are you going to be at the end of the day working with a lot of people? These are the types of questions that you need to be asking. So my five absolute must know. Number one is you just got to go look at the firm's site. Is it something that shows that they're actually good at what they do or you know, have they been dropping the ball when it comes to their website? Number two, what are you paying for? What's included? What's additional? What are you going to have to bring in later on? Number three, does the firm, does the person that you're hiring understand sales and marketing, which in my opinion is something that needs to be understood first before for the site comes along. Because if you build the site and then you try to add sales and marketing to it later, you might have to rebuild the site. Number four, what is the timeline? And number five, do they offer a turnkey solution? These are the questions that I believe you should be asking. You know, over the years, we here at Slam have had an opportunity to build a lot of sites, redesign a lot of sites, and work with other agencies and other contractors who are building and redesigning sites. We've seen the good, we've seen the bad, we've had our own struggles, and we've done some really amazing things that have helped our clients get to that next level. So if you're getting ready to start a web design project and you're not quite sure where to start, or if you think you might need to make some improvements to your website, but you're not quite sure and you just want an honest answer, an honest like, does this need work or where can this be improved, reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to take a look at your website and give you our honest feedback on next steps and where you need to go and where you really should be for your specific situation. You can find us at slamagency.com. Of course, if you're there, just click on the free consultation button. And if you're listening to us on a podcast network and you've enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, subscribe, rate, and review. Those things are super important. Five stars if you believe this was a five-star episode. And if you're watching us on social media, leave me a comment in the comments section. I love reading those and responding to those. And I appreciate it when you take the time to leave a comment. So thank you for tuning in. I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, subscribe and hit that bell. You'll be the first to be notified when new content goes live. After that, you can watch more videos from Slam Agency. We've picked something we think you'll love.